guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over two different articles dealing with the subject of how important it is for kids to grow up in two-parent households, the nuclear family, if you will, and especially how important it is for kids to have their father living with them in their life to guide them, raise them, help point them in the right direction, both for boys and girls. And the first article is titled, An Increasing Number of College-Educated Women Are Having Children Outside of Marriage. And this article is written by a woman, as well as the other one I'm going to do in a few minutes. And it's going to talk about how the numbers have skyrocketed, how women out, who have got college degrees, who in the past was known to get married, then have kids, are now just simply choosing to cohabitate and have kids or just get or have kids on their own and I can do it blah blah and the damaging effect it's showing across the board with the kids these days and how in the past like I said it was used to be obviously less educated women would do that but now the ones that are actually the college education are choosing this and like I said the damaging effect of all that and where do we know that all this idea all comes from what movement led to this I don't need no man I can do everything a man can do more career and be a mom, the effortless movement. Now, let me just say this to be clear, to make, there's no confusion, because I know I'm going to get some hate in the comment section here. I'm not saying a single mom can't love her kids, can't work hard to provide a good life, give them a good life, raise them to be good people, all that. I'm not saying that's not the case. I'm just saying is she can't do it all. And kids, boys and girls, need a father. They need that father there to pick up where in areas that she's not as strong in, and especially with the boys, to give the boys a good kick in the ass when they need it. Because we all know darn well for us guys, our moms were generally were a lot easier on us than our fathers are. Okay, Fathers tend to let the daughters get away with more, while the mothers are tougher on the daughters, and the mothers let the boys get away more, and they're tougher on... Excuse me. Yeah, the moms are tougher on the girls, but they're easier on the boys. When boys need that kick in the pants on occasion from the father to help lead him in the right direction. If he doesn't have the father to do that, he's going to get away with more. He's going to be more irresponsible. That's what we have today, guys. I'm sure many of you guys have noticed this for the last 20 years or so. It just seems to get worse and worse. The generations, and I can look at it right now, that are kids and teens and 20s. No offense to you guys in your 20s, to, but I don't mean all of you. That just, it seems like the respect has gotten less and less. They're, they're less respectful, less mannered, less responsible, less hardworking, less mature. And it's not an accident that we have a society more that of single parent households where they don't have both parents guiding them. And let's be honest, most of them live with their moms, okay? And they're t usually uh, easier on the boys, let them get away with stuff. And also the, boy, the kids are in school being usually raised by teachers. Uh, they're women, so that feminine energy. So they don't have the male attention that they they need and you can't raise and boys are different in how you handle them than girls okay but also girls need their fathers too to give them that strong influence they don't develop any daddy issues to show the way a man should be I suppose and if they don't then they start having daddy issues in life and want to have get that love from every guy in town because they can get from daddy amongst many other things but anyhow I'm going off here guys but the point is kids need both parents and when they don't have it the numbers show flat out it can be a problem and I think that's a big contributing factor what we have today. And I try to help. I'm doing my best to help guys become stronger, be the type of men they once were, that our fathers and grandfathers were, so we can get things, because things have gotten really bad. And kids need the strong father. So I'm going to get into this, and uh, you'll see the more I'm talking about. It says here, the uh, for many years now, both the likelihood of cohabitation at, at, uh, and the age at which they marry has increased for college-educated women. The numbers of those who had their first children outside of marriage, however, remained modest. But today, the trend is shifting upwards on that statistic. The percentage of college-educated women with non-maritable first birth, birth is increasing, providing a further disregard for, if not total rejection, of marriage as a foundation feature of family life. And by the way, guys, something I forgot to say in the beginning, I don't mean to interrupt, is this. I've made it quite clear from day one what I think about marriage in, in today's world, 2021, 2022, and all that. And I don't, for you guys that aren't into it, and obviously kids and family is not your top priority, then I urge you don't get married. However, for those of you guys that do want to have a family, there's definitely a, a helps if you are married with the kids' development. But 
That means you don't rush into it, though. You take your time, years, to get to know her. Every every possible thing to make sure it's going to work out. And then if you do get married, more of a likely for it to work out, and it will help the kids and so forth. But you got to be careful. And that also does mean uh, prenups and amongst many other things. But I'm not suddenly changing my mind about marriage. I'm just saying that if you're going to have kids, it is very beneficial to be married. To help with the kids and all that. But if you just don't care about that, there's obviously no reason to go rush and get married and be potentially raked over the coals. But you got to do your homework on the girl, spend years getting to know her, her family, all that, her goals, her ambitions, how she is communicating, how she is with money, all that stuff, if you're going to do it. But, but the kids do need a solid family and strong nuclear family to help them in the right direction. I just want to make that clear. Anyhow, it says uh, between 1996 and 2018, the number of women giving birth to their first child outside of marriage has risen ac across all educational groups. It says, let's look at the 2018 numbers. For those without high school diplomas, 86.5% women had their first child out of wedlock. Wow. Half of those with associates of arts degrees had their first child out of wedlock. And the percentage of women with at least a bachelor's degree who put child rearing before marriage had risen from 4% in 1996, now listen to this, to 24.5% in 2018. This is the large proportional increase among those groups. 4% to 24.5% in 22 years. Now what's going on here? Obviously, you have more and more women going to school, but over the last 20-some years, what's really been taking the world by storm, unfortunately, in all areas? The effortless movement. Women don't need a man. They can do anything a man can do and more and blah, 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 blah. And fathers are toxic and toxic masculine and all that BS. And what do you got? How are kids behaving today? How are kids' levels of maturity? How are kids' on worth ethic? Pretty bad. And again, moms can certainly, the single ones with are raising the kids, they can work hard for their kids. They can love their kids. They can do the best they can for them, but they still need a father. They can't do everything. And especially with the boys. The boys need that strong male influence. So this is not a good thing. It says here, <clears throat> The trouble for children and families. In the United States, today, one in four parents living with a child are not married, as cohabitation and children before marriage are, across the board, becoming more common. Though this is a new pattern of family formation is now extremely prevalent, it doesn't mean that it's good or healthy. Yeah, just because everybody does something doesn't mean it's right or it's working or a good idea. Cohabiting parent parent families are less stable than marital union families. Only 33% of children born to unmarried parents remain in an intact family through age 12 compared to 75% of children born to un to married parents. The lives of the for the lives of the former group are also more tumultuous as they experience roughly three times as many family transitions such as dissolution of cohabiting unions. The economic situations of those born to cohabiting parents are also typically worse than those born to married parents as a far greater percentage of cohabiting couples live at or below the poverty line. The mean income of married parents is about 50% higher than the of cohabiting couples. Married parents are also more likely to own a house and to provide health insurance for their children. Children who are born to poverty are less likely to complete high school. As the earlier statistics show, women who don't complete high school have an extremely high chance of having their first child out of wedlock. Thus, the cycle perpetuates itself. There you go with some of the numbers. Right there. It says, here's another thing to consider. 25% of births to married mothers are unintended, while half of births to cohabiting mothers are unintended. Those couples who find themselves in situations of unintended parenthood are far more likely to separate, causing even more instability for the child. Kids need stability. And, it, and if and there's turmoil, and you never know who the next guy is, or uh, mom and dad are, you know, they, you're living with the parents initially, but they're not married, and they break up and dad's gone or mom's gone. This messes with the kid's development, how he, can do, he or she can do in school, trust issues, all that. It's a big mess. Now, obviously, if it's a bad situation, then, you know, obviously, you know, the, someone has to go. But you know, I think you get my point. And I've said before a long time ago, hey, you know what? You could also be with somebody and have the kids and don't have to get married. And there is some truth to that. But still, it isn't always as stable. And while the couple can certainly, in my opinion, people are in their best behavior when they're not married. They're, they're together because they always know the person can leave. It doesn't always help the kid. But I do know people that are together, but don't, 
haven't gotten married and have the kid and the kids are doing well. But those people are rare because they have a great thing going. They're both responsible. It took a long time for them to get together and all that. And for their own reasons, they didn't get married. But it can be done. It just doesn't always work. It depends on the people, how long they were together before they actually had that kid. Because some people that dated one month got, and uh, the girl got pregnant and the guy stayed with her, but they didn't get married, it still could be a mess. But it just depends on the situation. Stability is necessary for the kids. It says here, studies have also shown that children of married parents have stronger relationships with their parents. That's true. Less likely to experience abuse of any kind, are healthier and less likely to engage in delinquent behavior and have a greater educational and career achievement. Right. The ones that have both the parents and a steady household with their stability and guidance and love are going to do better generally in school, not get into trouble, be more respectful, do well in life, and so forth. But if there's turmoil and disruption and somebody's always coming and going and all that, that's going to distract them in school, lead them probably to act out, get in trouble and so on and so forth. And usually if one person is, the kid's alone with one parent, and they're, the parent is working and the kid's alone all the time, they're not gonna have somebody there to make sure they stay out of trouble. Or they're, they're too tired to lay down the law when the kid needs to have the law laid down. In closing thoughts, marriage shouldn't be a maybe when it comes to family life. We and our children deserve better than the instability and tragic consequences that have resulted from America's widespread abandonment of marriage. Well, again, and I've talked about this countless times in the videos that, you know, what's the divorce rate nowadays? Now, week one can make the case that thanks to the effinist movement and has been pushing guys to act more like women and women to act like men. And it's a big freaking mess. Everybody's turned off from each other. No wonder more and more there's divorce going on. And thanks to things like social media and uh, dating apps and all that the t and the effinist movement, the temptation for women to end the marriage because they want to get a better guy because they feel entitled to that or step out and all that, which is almost being almost encouraged thanks to, because you're not empowered nowadays, according to the effinist movement, unless you can have an open marriage or any BS like that, then, uh, you know, it's a big mess. But, and it is what it is today. It's unfortunate. But if the two people actually have the similar goals, actually are, have a conservative background, some values, and they can make it work, it's going to be better for the family and the kids. I got to make that clear because this movie, we're like, SSM, I thought you were against, against marriage. I am in the sense for the guys because they get raked over the coals, but if they do indeed want a family, it's got to be done right. Now, I'm going to get onto an article that's praising the fathers and how much fathers are needed in uh, a development for both boys and girls. And this article says, good fathers make a, di a big difference and science proves it. It says here, fathering a child in the literal sense isn't so comp complicated, but being a dad is a whole other story. It says your fathers are critical to a child's development. It's easy to forget this amid the cultural acceptance of, wait for it, toxic masculinity as legitimate concept. But we ought to keep in mind that fathers have an irreplaceable role in the lives of their children. Thank God I grew up in a house. My mom and dad loved each other and I had my dad there. And my dad was old school and believe me, it laid down the law with me. There were times growing up I thought my dad was a jerk. And I'm, I'm using a different word here. There was another word I thought of my dad. May he rest in peace. But I look back now and realize he was being tough on me because I needed it. If he was easy on me, if he was doing what they do nowadays where the parents for like the last 25 years think it's a better idea to be their kid's best friend than to actually prepare them for a tough, harsh, competitive world, then I, they're doing the kid a disservice. It's better that if you have to choose between being an a-hole to your kids for a while or being their best buddy to make yourself feel better, better to be the a-hole for a while and prepare them for a tough world and give them a kick in the pants when they need it. Because otherwise, you have what we have today. How many kids nowadays, 20-somethings, that behave like teenagers because their parents decided they're going to be their best buddy growing up and weren't the tough, weren't the tough parents and gave them the kick in the pants they needed when they were developing? And it goes boys and girls. Says the uh, parental duo. Fathers aren't merely second adults in the home. From birth, children with involved fathers are more likely to be emotionally secure, have confidence in exploring their surroundings, develop better social connections as they grow older, and experience greater life satisfaction. This begins with a father-mother relationship. Fathers who have good relationships with their mother of their children are more likely to be involved parents and raise psychologically healthy children. Unsurprisingly, happy, supportive relationships also make for better mothers. A positive father-mother relationship results in more responsible or more responsive, affectionate, self-controlled, and confident parenting. 
Correct. It's a team. Now, I'm not a parent, guys. So I don't know what it's like to have kids and watch them grow up and experience all the different things. And every household's different and every kid's different, okay? But I was a kid once. I remember very well it was like in all different stages of development. And I recognize how important I had my mom and dad and how important my dad was in the picture. And again, and I also want to say this while I'm thinking about it. Yes, the kids need both a father, but they need a strong father. They can't have some of these wimpy beta guys they have nowadays where mom runs the show and he lives by the happy wife, happy life ridiculous concept. How well does that work out? They need someone, someone that's strong and a good leader, not someone that's a total P word. You know what I mean by that? And because that's not a good example. So for you fathers out there, you need to be strong for your kids. You need to be a good leader and adopt a lot of these qualities I talk about. Or for you grandfathers, or for you uncles, or you older brothers, or you future fathers out there. Your kids need you. They need your strength. They need your leadership. The dynamic between fathers and mothers also sets the tone for their children's behaviors. Fathers who treat their children's mothers with respect and handle relationship conflict in an appropriate manner are more likely to have sons who will likewise treat women with respect and less likely to engage in aggressive behavior towards women. Correct. And he can certainly treat mom well, but also he should demonstrate in front of his sons that if mom is being disrespectful to dad in some manner, and I do mean that really disrespectful or being rude, that he, in a loving manner, stands up for himself, lays down the law. That will teach the boy something. And also teach the girl to be attracted to a man that actually stands up for himself and lays down the law. And as a leader in the family. These fathers also raise daughters who are less likely to get involved in violent and unhealthy relationships. Girls with, invol with involved and respectful fathers develop healthy standards of how they ought to be treated by men. Contrasting this, husbands who hold anger or contempt towards their wives or give them the silent treatment are more likely to have anxious, withdrawn, and uh, antisocial children. Yeah, being a, this is why it's so important, guys, for you relationship guys. You get involved with a gal, and you see that the family, her family, are they're very loving, and they communicate well, and all these good things. That will mean your marriage and family with her could be like that. However, if they don't communicate well, and it's passive-aggressive, and let things build up, and there's turmoil, that's not going to go well for you. While caring and involved fathers can be found outside of marital relationships, they're more likely to exit, uh, exi excuse me, exist within the context of marriage. One reason for this could be the legal obligations and social norms associated with marriage and raising children, which connect fathers to their family unit. This could partially explain why families with married parents create a better environment for child rearing <coughs> compared to unmarried cohabiting parents. Continues saying, children who have involved fathers perform better in school. Various studies have shown that fathers who are nurturing and playful with their children raise kids with higher IQs, better linguistic and cognitive capabilities, and greater levels of academic readiness at the start of the academic journey. For example, kids who grew up in, with involved fathers are more likely to earn most A grades in school, less likely to repeat a grade, get suspended or expelled from school, and more likely to go to college and find reliable employment following high school. Correct. Because again, now let's just talk about the boys. The boys are getting out of line. The dad's going to be more likely than the mom to really give that boy a kick in the pants. And fathers also recognize in boys a lot of the BS that we're capable of and can nip that in the bud right away. While the moms may not notice these things as well. The same way as a father might recognize certain things that the young girl's doing, but the mother will know immediately and how to handle it accordingly. Because how you handle girls and how you handle boys is different. And how boys are in school and how girls are in school are different. Okay, you can't just handle one 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 way and think they're both going to go that way. It doesn't work. So you need both. And again, if he's there and he's strong and a good leader and helpful, the like likelihood that the kids will do well on multiple fronts is more likely. And of course, you want that for your kids. It says here, father's role in psychological and behavior outcomes. Fathers also play an important role in the psychological well-being and social behaviors of their children. Kids with involved fathers are less likely to get in trouble at school and around the neighborhood and be more sociable with children in early childhood. Correct. <clears throat> fathers and mothers interact with their children differently. Fathers spend more one-on-one -on -one time with their infants, preschool-aged children, engaging in stimulating, playful activities. These interactions promote emotional and behavioral regulation in kids. For example, roughhousing with dad can teach kids how to regulate aggressive impulses and physical contact without losing emotional control. 
Yeah. How many times do you see young boys roughhousing or, you, you know what I mean by that, wrestling around with mom? No, but the boys will do it with their dad because that's just, you know, how we are. That, that, that's the type of creatures we are. And it's not bad. It's not toxic. And dads can also teach the boys self-control and he can teach them how to stand up for himself and, I would, and learn how to fight. These are all important things, but with, and have restraint. Falls fathers also emphasize independence, exploring the outside world and achievement, while mothers are more focused on nurturing. Translation, masculine and feminine energy. Back to this. Fathers, now listen to this, independence, exploring the outside world, achievement, all masculine energy, purpose, while mothers are more focused on nurturing, feminine energy, nurturing, bonding, connecting, all that stuff, right? Both of these are critical for the healthy and well-rounded development of children. Thus, kids who grew up with involved fathers and mothers are more comfortable with exploration and more likely to demonstrate self-control and pre-social behaviors. Further, kids who have good relationships with their dad are less likely to experience depression, less likely to, to lie, and less likely to be disruptive in their behaviors. These are very interesting findings here. Additionally, they're more likely to be physically and emotionally healthy, achieve academically, and avoid drugs, violence, and delinquent behaviors. Again, if the kids don't have it's a single parent household, mom's working all the time, she can't focus on everything, so things can slip by, kids can get into trouble. Sometimes kids will get into trouble because they're looking for that attention from the parents. But if they got both parents there and they're divvying up the time and a good role model on multiple fronts, less likely to get in trouble. Uh, the father daughter relationship. Daddy issues is a term thrown around to refer to a strained relationship with fathers, including absent or abusive fathers. The term is often uh, trivialized and used in context of jokes, but the idea it conveys is a serious one. Poor father-child relationships can have poor effect on children, leaving an impact well into adulthood. For example, children with insecure attachment to their fathers, such as they approach their relationship with fear or uncertainty, have lower levels of self-efficiency and higher levels of social anxiety as college students. However, insecure attachment with mothers does not predict these changes in self uh, or social anxiety. This suggests that mothers and fathers might have unique contributions to child's development. Correct. Mom has her area that really help out with the development, and the fathers have their area. You need both in that situation. And, and let's just say maybe that the father isn't there because maybe he passed away or something awful happened. Well, then it's important that the kids also have maybe a, a, a grandfather or uncle to be around, male presence to help out. It's so important. <clears throat> it says here, uh, daddy issues are more frequently discussed in the context of father-daughter relationships. We especially hear young women labeling as having daddy issues if they find themselves in unhealthy romantic relationships or dating significantly older men. While most research has focused on the effects of fathers in the psychological development of children, more broadly, some have speci specifically <laughs> explored the role of fathers in raising daughters. One study found that fathers who expressed interest and participate in their daughter's life had daughters with greater self-esteem and higher levels of academic achievement. Another study found that higher quality father fathering decreased daughters' engagement in risky S-word behavior by increasing the amount of parental monitoring they received and decreasing their affiliation with peers who promote risky S-word behavior. Translation, dad cares about me, dad loves me, dad's involved with me, therefore I don't need to go seek that love that I didn't get from dad by every dude in town. Or I get involved with older guys who certainly aren't good for me, again, because I didn't get that affection and love from dad. It's not that hard to connect the dots here. Fathers also shape their daughters' expectations of men in adulthood. Girls who receive lower quality parental uh, paternal investment develop lower expectations for their male partners and tend to have higher numbers of S-word partners. Additionally, women who experience absent, harsh, or deviant fathers fathering perceive greater S-word interest among men. Dr. Danielle Del Poire suggests this psychological change could increase a woman's likelihood of engaging in unrestricted or risky S-word behavior in response to growing up with a disengaged father. Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that in this era right now of the last couple decades where more and more uh, single parent households, and let's be honest, when I say single parent, I do mean the single MOMs. And yes, I have to say that because if I, if I say the other thing too much, YouTube doesn't like it. I kid you not. Where the father is in the picture as much. And we're also in an era where, as I call Sam Gamora 2.0, where it seems like the, there's more carousel riding than ever with the young gals. 
Call me crazy, but with less of the father in the picture, so they're making up for that love and attention they lacked when they were younger with every dude in town. Is it every gal nowadays? Of course not. But the numbers are pretty interesting, pretty crazy and interesting given the stories I share and your guys' experience from all over the world and the stories you share. Not to mention the effortless movement encouraging the gals to go out there and pretty much hook up with every dude because, hey, the boys can do it. The S-word revolution. See what I mean? In uh, closing thoughts, in recent years on Father's Day, many social media users have taken the day to call for the cancellation of the holiday, <laughs> minimize it, or applaud mothers instead. I remember that whole song and dance. What a load of crap. Cancel Father's Day. It's unbelievable the disdain that's out there thanks to the evidence movement towards good men. It's bullshit. There's no doubt that mothers are superheroes worthy of infinite adoration. And in some circumstances, mothers have to take on the role of being both parents, just as some fathers have to do the same. But this doesn't eliminate the unique contributions of each parent. Just as we need good mothers, we need good fathers to raise good children. Amen to that. So there you go, guys. Two articles I think are very important about raising the children. Again, back to the stable households of marriage. Again, I'm all for... I, 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 I've been saying from day one, don't go get married unless unless you absolutely have something because of your culture, religion, or you want a family and kids. Otherwise, I don't see why you'd do it, given how things are in today's world in 2022 with the laws and, and how, let's be honest, people are together long enough, they eventually run out of things to talk about and they get bored. But if you are for a family and want a lot of things, then it's better for the kids to be in a household with mom and dad and get married. By God, as I told you before, you better do your homework on your girl, spend years with her, finding everything about her and her life and her family and all that stuff and how she handles things before you do that. And then if you're together, do your darndest both of you to work together to work out and we'll help the kids because the numbers show it. But also again, back to this is how important it is to have a father. And I can't stress enough how important it is. You know, again, nowadays, if you got to have the as for parents out there or future parents, this whole being your kid's best friend type of thing and being their buddy and everything, you know, that's great if you can pull it off and have the kid be raised to be responsible and respectful and all that. But given the choice between being a jerk to your kid for a while and having them not like you, but you're helping them prepare them for the world versus being their best friend and letting them get away with crap and they end up becoming an irresponsible adult on multiple fronts, it's better to be the jerk for a while. And we have too much of that for decades. Uh, my dad's my best friend. My, my mom's my best friend. That's great if they're helping you, but if, you know... But, it's unbelievable to me how things have gone the direction where, you know, I see kids now, they graduate college, and I've known some of them. Their maturity level was like what I was in high school, okay? It's a whole level of maturity much better back then. The, the manners have gotten worse. Well, actually, like, there's no manners, no respect, no hard work, no work ethic. It comes down, at the end of the day, as adults, they're responsible for themselves and their own actions, but it came from the parenting and also the schools. Something's got to be done. So, anyway, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me think about this. Let me know. Let me know what you think about with the having the father involved. How important it is. I'd like to really hear about it from you guys. Also from you, three point six percent now. The gals that watch me here that are on YouTube. I'd like to hear about your opinion too. The good ones. If you hate me, I don't want to hear your opinion. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.